What if ships could climb mountains? In China, ships don't just sail across rivers, they ascend mountains. It sounds like science fiction, but it's a staggering reality. In one of the world's most rugged regions, engineers have pulled off a feat that defies gravity itself, lifting 10,000 ton ships hundreds of meters into the sky. This isn't some futuristic animation. It's a colossal steel elevator that carries vessels the size of football fields nearly 200 meters upward, more than twice the height of the Statue of Liberty. No sails, no engines, just brute mechanical force, precision, and audacity. The idea sounds absurd at first. Why would anyone lift a ship straight into the air? But once you understand what stood in their way, mountains, cliffs, landslides, you'll realize it wasn't just genius. It was necessary, and the story behind it isn't just about engineering. It's about survival, economic rebirth, and a hidden strategy that could reshape global trade in ways the world hasn't seen coming. Welcome to the Gupitan Ship Lift, a $7.7 billion mega elevator that transforms ships into skywalkers. Towering like a 66-story building, this beast can hoist ships higher than the Great Pyramid of Giza and the Christ the Redeemer combined. Each lift begins with a massive chamber, 40 meters long and 12 meters wide, swallowing an entire cargo vessel. The steel doors, weighing over 400 tons, slam shut with military precision. Then the real magic begins. The chamber, filled with both water and ship, begins to rise. At full load, the total weight surpasses 11,000 tons. But thanks to a network of ultra-high-strength cables and a lift system fine-tuned to millimeter precision, the entire mass ascends smoothly along towering concrete guide rails. It's not just a lift. It's a floating fortress, a vertical highway in the sky, and a bold rejection of the limits gravity tried to impose. To understand why this was built, you need to know the terrain. China's inland regions, like Guizhou province, are a nightmare for logistics. We're talking jagged limestone peaks, narrow river valleys, and unpredictable monsoon rains that turn calm rivers into violent torrents. This area wasn't just difficult to navigate, it was deadly. Locals once called it the mountain that devours men, thanks to its landslides, collapsing roads, and sheer cliffs. Transporting goods here was like playing Russian roulette with every shipment. For centuries, these mountains kept the region cut off from the economic lifelines that fueled the rest of China. Roads crumbled, rail lines stalled, waterways were blocked by vertical cliffs. Traditional transport methods simply couldn't cope. In a country racing to become the world's economic leader, Guizhou remained stuck in the past, isolated by the very earth beneath its feet. Guizhou is not some sleepy corner of the map. It's home to 36 million people, more than the population of many European nations. And yet, for decades, it remained economically paralyzed. Why? Because moving anything in or out was nearly impossible. Shipping a single container from Guizhou to a coastal port like Shanghai could take up to two weeks. Costs were three times higher than in other parts of China. Investors stayed away. Local industries couldn't compete. The region became a logistical dead zone. Traditional solutions, like canal locks or tunnels, didn't cut it. The elevation change alone required over 20 lock chambers. That would have taken hours per trip, not to mention astronomical construction costs and maintenance. So China did something extraordinary. They didn't try to flatten the mountains or reroute the rivers. They built over them, literally, giving Guizhou not just a trade route, but a new identity. Before the ship lift, moving cargo through this part of China was like threading a needle through a hurricane. Trucks struggled across landslide-prone roads. Barges hit dead ends at sheer cliffs. Every route was a gamble, and every delay cost money. Even when routes worked, they were slow and inefficient. A journey that should take hours dragged on for days. Goods perished. Costs skyrocketed. Local economies suffocated under the weight of logistical chaos. To make matters worse, this wasn't just a regional problem, it was a national bottleneck. Without access to efficient inland routes, 
China's grand vision of connecting every province to its economic engine was fractured. That's why the Gupatan ship lift isn't just a marvel. It's a solution to a decades-long gridlock, a vertical shortcut carved into stone, and a clear signal that China was done waiting for the terrain to cooperate. In most places around the world, canal locks are the go-to solution for navigating elevation changes in waterways. They've worked for centuries, from the Panama Canal to Europe's Rhine. But in Guizhou, they met their match. The terrain here doesn't allow for gradual elevation. It demands verticality. To overcome the nearly 200-meter elevation difference using conventional locks, engineers would have needed over 20 lock chambers stacked like dominoes. Each chamber would require precise construction, extensive maintenance, and hours of operation per ship, rendering the entire system painfully slow. The problem wasn't just engineering. It was time and money. A lock-based solution here would drain both, while still leaving the region vulnerable to landslides and floods. And in a place where every hour of delay bleeds money, that simply wasn't acceptable. So China pivoted. Instead of adapting the solution to the terrain, they adapted the terrain to the solution, choosing power, speed, and elevation over tradition. Faced with impossible terrain and economic stagnation, Chinese engineers made a decision that shocked even global experts. Build a vertical ship elevator, one of the largest ever attempted. It wasn't just a new machine, it was an entirely new way of thinking about transportation. Instead of navigating around the mountain, the ship would go over it. In one colossal motion, a fully loaded vessel would be lifted from one altitude to another, cutting days of travel down to just hours. The move was bold, expensive, and unprecedented. The result was the Gupitan ship lift, a staggering tower of concrete, steel, and hydraulic power. It compresses what used to be a four-day river journey into just two and a half hours. That's not a shortcut. That's teleportation by mechanical force. This wasn't just built to move ships. It was built to move a region, economically, logistically, and politically, into the future. At the heart of this sky highway is a floating chamber, 40 meters long and 12 meters wide, that acts like a cradle for ships. When a vessel enters, the chamber is sealed with massive steel gates weighing 400 tons each. The system then floods the chamber, balancing the ship in a neutral buoyancy state. Then begins the ascent. The chamber, now weighing over 11,000 tons with water and cargo, is pulled vertically along four concrete towers using an elaborate system of steel cables and counterweights. These towers are embedded 70 meters into the earth, providing immovable support. Each of the 256 cables is made of high tensile steel, wound from 127 smaller strands, designed to handle forces equivalent to towing jumbo jets. Interlocking metal teeth, built from a shock-absorbing alloy, grip and guide the chamber with millimeter precision. From power consumption to stress distribution, every part of the system is a symphony of engineering, and it works flawlessly, efficiently, and thousands of times per year. From the outside, the ship lift is a brutalist marvel of raw mechanics. But from inside the chamber, the journey feels like science fiction. As the chamber begins its vertical climb, the world outside seems to fall away. The river becomes a ribbon, the villages become specks. Small portholes in the steel walls offer fleeting glimpses of the disappearing valley below. The sensation is eerie. You're floating, yet rising. Sailing, yet ascending into the clouds. It's like watching the Earth retreat in reverse time-lapse. Midway through the ascent, the sheer scale of the surrounding mountains becomes obvious. You're no longer just crossing terrain, you're conquering it. By the time the chamber reaches the upper reservoir, you've transitioned into another world entirely. Then, without a jolt or shudder, the forward gates open. Before you lies a vast lake, calm, expansive, ready for travel. What was once an impassable wall is now a doorway. The raw power behind surgical precision lifting. 11,000 tons of steel, water, and cargo sounds like chaos. But in the Gupatan ship lift, 
It's a performance of controlled power. Each cable, cog, and counterweight is fine-tuned to execute the lift with breathtaking precision. The chamber glides upward with no room for error. Every mechanical motion is monitored by sensors that detect imbalance to within fractions of a millimeter. If anything feels off, the system compensates instantly using hydraulic dampers and computer-controlled feedback loops. Those dampers aren't ordinary. They're giant shock absorbers filled with enough hydraulic fluid to fill an Olympic swimming pool. They can handle forces equivalent to a meteor impact without flinching. All of it is powered by the dam's own hydroelectric energy, with backup systems capable of completing an emergency descent even during a total grid failure. This isn't just raw strength, it's calculated, responsive muscle. The ship lift's towers are more than vertical supports, they're the backbone of a living, breathing machine. Anchored deep into bedrock, they resist not just the weight of the lift, but the fury of nature itself. Winds, floods, even earthquakes. Each structural element is embedded with redundancy. Every cable system has a twin. Every break has a backup. Even the control computers are quintuple redundant, five separate systems running in parallel, constantly checking each other for errors. The gear rack system, essentially skyscraper-sized cogs, must lock into place with microscopic precision. Their metal teeth are crafted from a hybrid alloy designed to be both rock-hard and flexible, capable of absorbing vibrations that would cripple lesser machines. And yet, with all this complexity, the system remains smooth and almost silent in operation. It's like watching a skyscraper dance, and it does this up to 24 times a day, every day, without fail. In a system this massive, precision isn't a luxury, it's survival. One miscalculation, one delayed reaction, and 11,000 tons of steel and cargo could come crashing down like a meteor. The stakes? Catastrophic loss of life, infrastructure collapse, and an international incident. That's why the Gupitan shiplift operates with military-grade safety protocols. The control system uses five independent computers, a concept known as quintuple redundancy. If even one system disagrees with the others, the entire operation halts until the discrepancy is resolved. Every bolt, every weld, every gear is monitored in real time. Sensors track temperature, pressure, alignment, and vibration, sending constant data streams to centralized hubs. There's no room for good enough, only perfection. The result? A zero-failure track record. In a machine designed to defy nature, human error has been engineered out of the equation. Before the lift, crossing this mountainous stretch took four grueling days. Today, that same journey takes just 30 minutes. It's not a bridge. It's not a tunnel. It's vertical magic that bends the rules of time and space. The speed isn't just impressive. It's transformative. Imagine cutting shipping delays by 90%, slashing fuel costs, and turning multi-day journeys into same-day deliveries. That's not just efficient, that's revolutionary logistics. And it's reliable. With up to 24 lift cycles per day, the system can handle nearly 5 million tons of cargo annually, rain or shine, day or night. This isn't a novelty, it's a full-fledged freight highway etched into the sky. In the grand scheme of infrastructure, Few projects turn time into a competitive advantage. This one does it every single hour. Guizhou used to be a forgotten province, isolated, undervalued, economically irrelevant. But since the completion of the shiplift, everything has changed, and the numbers tell the story. Shipping costs have dropped by staggering 67%. Industrial output has surged by 42%. Foreign investment has jumped 83%. What was once a region of subsistence farming now boasts tech parks, export zones, and booming service industries. This isn't just economic growth, it's transformation. Villages that once survived on meager agriculture now thrive as support hubs for logistics, maintenance, and shipping. Thousands of jobs have been created, and for the first time in decades, Guizhou has become a magnet for innovation. The lift didn't just move cargo, it moved people, money, and ambition. While headlines focus on skyscrapers and high-speed trains, the real engine of China's rise may lie beneath the surface, in places like Gopiten. Because this shiplift isn't just about efficiency, 
it's about connectivity. By linking Guizhou directly to the Yangtze River, China's economic artery, the lift integrates a once isolated region into the national supply chain. This strengthens the domestic network that supports China's dual circulation policy, the strategy to rely less on global trade and more on internal flows. In other words, this isn't just infrastructure, it's insurance, against sanctions, against shipping crises, against geopolitical shocks. The lift becomes a silent weapon in China's playbook, one that doesn't roar, but reshapes the map. And as China exports this technology across Asia and Africa, it becomes more than a lift. It becomes leverage. On the surface, the Gopitan ship lift looks like an engineering marvel, but behind the steel and concrete is something far more strategic. A chess move in a global economic game. This isn't just about moving cargo, it's about repositioning power. China knows that in a world increasingly defined by supply chain disruptions, whoever controls the flow of goods controls a future. And while others build reactive solutions, China plays the long game, investing in infrastructure that not only solves today's problems, but anticipates tomorrow's. The lift is part of a wider network, from the South-North Water Transfer Project to the massive inland ports quietly transforming China's interior. Each project connects and strengthens the other, creating a resilient web of movement that functions even if international arteries are cut off. It's not just a lift, it's leverage. And in geopolitics, that makes all the difference. What happens when global shipping routes are blocked, when sanctions hit, or when ports close overnight due to conflict or pandemic? For most nations, it's a disaster. For China, it's a challenge they've already prepared for. The Gopitan ship lift is part of a quiet but powerful shift, building internal circulation systems capable of sustaining the economy even in total isolation. Inland waterways, connected by engineering marvels like this, ensure goods keep flowing, no matter what happens beyond the borders. And as weather grows more extreme and global systems more fragile, this infrastructure doubles as climate resilience. The lift doesn't just move ships, it regulates water flow, prevents flooding, and keeps river transport viable amid shifting rainfall patterns. It's a machine, a climate buffer, and an economic firewall, all in one. If China can lift 10,000-ton ships over mountains, what else are they building that the world hasn't noticed? What other mega-projects lie hidden in the mist, buried in valleys, or rising in silence behind remote ridges? The Gopitan ship lift may be just one piece of a much larger puzzle. Across China's western provinces, similar technologies are being tested, scaled, and exported, not just as infrastructure, but as influence. Chinese engineers from this project are now advising others in Southeast Asia, Central Asia, and Africa, all under the Belt and Road Initiative. This isn't just about steel and concrete, it's about knowledge transfer, global reach, and strategic control. So next time the world watches China's skyscrapers rise or bullet trains blur across landscapes, remember, the real game-changing power might be moving silently beneath your feet or rising, one ship at a time, into the sky.